guys, my name is Jolie, and today I'm going to give you a tour of Betty. Betty's similar to most of our standard RVs. We're first going to step inside. And you'll notice that there is a control panel right here on this wall. This control panel is where you'll check your levels and control some features inside of the RV. So right here are all your levels and they have little buttons above each word. So first you have LPG. LPG stands for propane. That's going to run most of your heating features like your stove, your oven, water heater, house heater. This is also going to run your refrigerator while driving. All you do is click the little button and you'll see it shows you your levels right here. So right now you have two thirds of a tank of propane. This may vary depending on the time of you, you renting. Next to that, you'll see the word BAT. This stands for house battery, which is different from your chassis. And it runs about 90% of the items inside the RV. Now the, there's four items that the battery does not run. And those include your AC unit, your microwave, your 110 outlet, and your um, televisions. So these four items will not run on just the house battery. They're gonna either run on your generator or a power plug up. So right now you have a, about two thirds of a battery, but this should be full when you rent. Next you'll see fresh. Fresh stands for fresh water tank. This tank holds portable water for on the road. And right now that is currently full. Next to that, you'll see black and gray. Black and gray are your holding tanks. So whenever you use the restroom, it's gonna go down to your black tank. Whenever you wash your hands or take a shower, it's gonna go down into your gray tank. So both of those levels are currently empty and that will start to fill up whenever you wash your hands or use your bathroom. So that's how you check your levels. I would check those about once a day. Next to your levels, you'll see a generator. The generator is very easy to operate. You'll see a little scan right here. This will show you your hours. And next to it, you'll see this is where you will start your generator. So all you do is hold down stop, wait for this little red light to turn on. Once it's on, you hold down start. You release your finger from start when it's fully cranked. Now there's a few things to keep in mind um, that play in with your generator. Your generator does run on the same fuel your engine runs on, and your generator will automatically shut off at a quarter of a tank. Um, so just be cautious of that. That's just a safety feature to make sure you're not stranded anywhere. All right, below your generator, you'll see a water pump. This water pump right here, when I turn it on, I now have access to all of my water features, such as my sink, shower, and toilet. What this water pump is doing is it's pulling water from your fresh water tank. Now make sure you turn it off when you're not using water as it is a small motor that could possibly burn out. Next to your water pump, you'll notice that you have two different types of water heaters. You have a propane water heater and you have an electric water heater. Now your propane, you can use any time on your house battery or plugged up. But as far as electric goes, you have to use it with a generator or a power plug on. I would suggest turning on your uh, either or of your uh, water heaters about 25 to 30 minutes before you want to take a hot shower. So that's that for um, the control panel. A lot of it's just trial and error. Um, now moving on to below the control panel, which is going to be um, your kitchen sink. You'll notice that there's a 110 outlet here. Again, that will not work unless you're plugged up or have the generator on. This is your awning right here. When you hold it down, it goes in, and when you hold it up, it goes out. Now, it's very important to remember if you have the key in the ignition that this will not operate. If it's out, it will not go in. If it's in, it will not go out. And this is a pretty big awning, you see. And it goes all the way out. 
Uh, you also have some cool little lights out here during nighttime. And then you just hold it down to let your awning in, making sure that it's fully in before driving off. That's very important. We don't want to risk it coming off the RV. You can see that I'm just holding down this button. To let it in and I'll hold it up to let it out. And you can see the arms go all the way in. Once it's all the way in, you're good to drive off. Uh, these are where your light switches are for your outside awning. This is uh, just a dummy, or actually these, oh sorry, this light switch right here turns on your step light. Next to this is your living room lights. A lot of people look for light switches. It's going to be right here. All the other lights are going to have a switch next to them or a button on the lights themselves. Below that you'll see it is a battery disconnect. When I turn this off, everything inside the RV is completely shut off. When I turn it back on, everything automatically turns back on. So essentially this is a plug for everything. We turn this off for two reasons, when we're fueling gas and propane. The reason why we turn this off is to make sure all propane features are completely shut off before fueling with gas and propane. Other than that, you can leave it on. Below that is a solar panel control. Don't worry about this, we do not provide solar panels. You'll see that there is a fire extinguisher here. I hope you guys don't need to use it, but it's there if you need it. Alrighty, so you can come inside the RV. You'll notice that you have a dinette right here. This dinette does turn into a bed. It's very easy. Below the table, you'll notice that there's a little switch right here. This switch will flip to the other side and the table will push down. Once the table is pushed down, you can lay the cushions over the table, almost like Tetris, to fill in this spot. Then when you're done, push the table all the way back up and you flip it back up. Now it's in, not going down. You also have a bed up here and there is a ladder right here as well. And this ladder will go into these metal brackets so you can climb up into the bed. Now you can get in the bed. Just make sure you put it back before driving off so it doesn't fly everywhere. <laughs> this is your television right here. You have two black nozzles. When you loosen these black nozzles, the TV, the TV will um, swivel out. So now people that are laying in the back bed can watch TV. Now, whenever you have it out, you can tighten these nozzles back so it doesn't kind of go back. But when you're done, just make sure you push it back and tighten back the nozzles before driving off so you don't risk the TV breaking. Alrighty, now you have a kitchen on this side. You have an extra counter space right here. You also have a sink with a cover on it as well. And this sink is pretty cool. In this cabinet right here, you'll notice that there's plates, cups, and bowls, along with a coffee maker and coffee cups. You'll notice in all the other cabinets as well, you have other kitchen supplies, such as silverware, bottle opener, can opener, scissors, etc. You guys can look around the cabinets to see what you guys have. You also have pots and pans in here underneath the stove. And in order to operate the stove, make sure you lift this guy up as it is not a cooktop. And what you're gonna do is press this down and put it on the flame and spark. Once you spark, you'll notice that your flame is lit 
and now you're free to cook on your stove. Same goes for the oven as well. I'm gonna go ahead and open the oven and you'll see on this bottom rack that there was gonna be a flame to ignite. And then just make sure you turn it off before you're done. You have a cool little light here as well. And before driving off, make sure you put this back down so it doesn't break. Microwaves up here. Again, your microwave will not operate unless you're plugged up or have the generator on. This is your refrigerator. Nice size. And in order to turn your refrigerator and freezer on, you have to open up the freezer and you'll notice that there's a little guy like this. All you do is turn it on and it's gonna turn on auto mode. So therefore, when you're on just the house battery, it's gonna run on propane. Whenever you hook up to a power source or start your generator, it's gonna automatically transfer over to power. So therefore, you really don't have to touch it until the end of your trip when you're ready to turn it off. You have to give it a little push, make sure it's snapped in. One thing to keep in mind is you have to be level in order for your refrigerator to cool. If you're on a steep slope or if you're unlevel, your refrigerator is going to have a hard time igniting the flame so it can cool down. So make sure you are level. This is your bed with also a little privacy curtain as well. And you'll notice in this little cubby above the bed that there are some USB outlets and you have them throughout the RV. So if you want to charge your phone without starting the generator or plugging up, you're more than welcome to use a USB outlet. This right here is how you turn on your heater. Again, your heater is going to run on propane. Works just like a regular house thermostat. Underneath, you have a little light switch as well. In order to turn your heater on, you just flip this little white switch to warmer. And then when you're ready to turn it off, switch it to cooler and it kind of clicks in. Now, if you notice your heat isn't working, you may have low battery or no battery. You may have low propane or your propane tank may be off. So those are a few things to kind of check on your control panel and outside on your propane tank that kind of play in with your heat. For your AC unit, the controls are gonna be on the AC unit itself. Again, you'll need the generator or a power hookup in order to operate this AC unit. You have fire alarms and carbon monoxide detectors all throughout the RV, so those will alarm you if something's going inside the RV that shouldn't be. You also have a breaker box as well. I doubt you'll need to get into the breaker box, but if you do, everything is labeled. Sometimes if you have a lot of things going on at once, like four phones plugged up in and a microwave going on, sometimes things are bound to flip. So when you plug up to a power source or start your generator, come inside and see if your microwave is on. If your microwave is on, that means you have full power. If it's not on, you may need to check the breaker from your power source or check your breaker on your breaker box, which is underneath the bed. You pop it open and you can flip the breakers on and off to reset them. Very easy depending on what is not working. This right here are fuses. I highly doubt you'll need to get into those, but if you notice that there's no power, then you can come over here to your breaker box or go outside to your power source and look at that breaker box. Last but not least is the restroom. Restroom is a pretty decent size. For the toilet, you have a foot pump right here underneath the toilet to flush. And when you notice, the hole opens. You also have two to three rolls of septic safe, RV safe toilet paper. So if you decide to purchase your own, just make sure it says septic safe or RV safe on the package itself. And you can basically buy that anywhere like Walmart, CBS, really anywhere. Above the toilet paper, you'll see a 110 outlet with a reset button. 
This outlet will reset all the other outlets inside of the RV. So if you notice one isn't working, like you know the kitchen or the dinette, then you can come over here and reset it. You also have a breaker for your outlets as well. In order to reset your outlet, you come over here and there's a button with a small wor word called reset. All you do is press this button until it clicks in. Again, this outlet will reset all the outlets inside and out. In this cabinet, you'll notice that there is some aqua chem. You may have a smaller bottle than this, but we suggest pouring about a teaspoon of this in your toilet a day with a little bit of water to kind of dilute it. The reason why we put this in our toilet is to break down waste product and help with smell. So this will be your friend. Underneath is just some storage underneath the sink. And then your shower works just like a regular house shower. You have your hot and cold and your little thing right there. You also have a cool fan up here. Throughout the RV, you'll notice that there are sunroofs and fans to kind of give you some ventilation. So what you'll do is you'll open up your vent through this little black nozzle and you'll turn on the fan. Now, if the fan does not turn on by the switch, you may have a switch itself that controls it. So when I turn this switch off, you'll notice that now my fan is off and I can turn it back on and my fan will automatically turn back on without hitting the switch right here. It's very important that you make sure to close the vent before driving off and if it's raining. Very important. We don't want to risk any water damage or the sunroof itself coming off while driving. If it gets steamy or stinky or whatever, you can kind of cool it down. And have a little light switch. Some more storage is in here with the little hanger. You also have a Roku and a satellite for your TV as well. So you can get up to 10 to 15 local channels wherever you're located, depending if you have service or not. You also have a full stereo system inside the RV as well. If you'll notice un underneath the dinette, you'll see some speakers. Uh, the blinds work very easy. You just push them up and pull them down to operate. You also have some more USB outlets up here and over there. We have storage in here as well. Yeah, and that's it for the inside. Let's go ahead and go All right, on. We're gonna go ahead and do the walkthrough on the outside, but real quick, I wanted to show your screen and door. You just snap it in and you have a little bug screen there so no bugs can get in. When you're done, snap it in. This right here underneath your second staircase is your house battery. And like I was saying, this will run about 90% of the items inside of the RV. Again, there's four items that the house battery does not run. Um, and that will, that's when you'll use your generator or your power hookup. Your battery will not supply power to your bigger powered items like your AC unit and microwave. You will need to hook up to a power source or start your generator for those items to work. All right, so this right here is your propane tank. So like I was saying, this is gonna run most of your heating features along with your refrigerator. You can go to Love's, Pilot, Flying J's, any of those big truck stops, you can go and fill up propane. You can also fill up propane at your campsite if they provi provide that for you. It's very easy. Somebody will legally do it for you. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds to fill up. Just make sure you hit your battery disconnect. Before they start filling up your propane, you need to make sure your battery disconnect is off. And that battery disconnect is located right here. This is your battery disconnect. Just make sure you switch it off before they start filling up your propane. You also have a gauge right here to check your levels. Um, this gauge is also on your control panel as well. And then when you're ready to close it, just make sure you flip these tabs. 
All right, that was your propane. Moving along now, you have a couple 110 outlets right here. Again, you'll need a have your generator or plugged up in order for those to operate. This is your big garage storage. So this is where most of your supplies are gonna be located along with some storage. You'll notice that your dump hose is right here. All right, I'm gonna show you where you connect your dump hose. So you'll notice underneath the gas and same for the power, Sometimes your dump is located in different areas, in a storage or sometimes on the opposite side, but it's most likely gonna be underneath your gas. So you're gonna twist this. Again, you have another little clamp to hold the door open. All right, so this is your sewer. You'll notice that there's a cap on it. You're gonna unscrew it off like so and put it in. You'll see these little circles just, just slides right in. And then you have an elbow end. So this elbow will essentially go into the hole in the ground. Just make sure it's everything's nice and tight and secured. So once it's tight and secured, you'll notice that you have a black lever and you have a gray lever. This is coded from your tanks. You have a black tank and you have a gray tank. You're first gonna pull your black tank. You're gonna pull it and it's gonna come about to right here. So essentially it's a wall. When you pull it, all of your sewer toilet water is going to come out. It's going to take about a minute or two. But when you're done, you close it back up and then you pull your gray. The reason why we pull our gray last is to rinse it out. So when we unhook, we're not messing with yucky, nasty water. Then when you're done, close it back. You can unhook, put this cap back on, and you're good to go. This is your water source. You'll notice that you have a regulator on this end and a regular inlet on the other end. All right, I'm gonna grab my water hose and show you where we put it. So you notice right here it says city water connection. So this city water connection is for pressurized water. I'm gonna go ahead and stick my regulator through here. And then once it's connected, I stick my other end into my water source. Once I have it connected, I turn my water on and keep it on. Now I have pressurized water at all of my lines. Now keep in mind, if you have this connected, there's no need for you to turn on your water pump on your control panel. The reason why that is, is because your water pump is pulling from your fresh water tank, the portable tank inside the RV, and not really pulling from this pressure. Next is your power source. I'm gonna go ahead and show you where you plug up your power source. You can follow me. You'll notice that there is a 30 amp 125 volt plug-in right here. And you'll hook this into the RV, works just like a puzzle piece. Once it's screwed on, you can plug it in your power source through a 110 outlet or a 30 amp outlet. Once you have this plugged up, your AC, your microwave outlets, and television are now going to work. You also have some leveling blocks, work very easy. You just stack them up like Legos and drive up on them. Um, leveling is more of a comfort thing, so if you feel uncomfortable because you're unlevel, then you're more than welcome to use those. And you also have a couple camping chairs as well along with a couple lights in here. All right, I'm just closing this outside storage. You'll notice that above is a backup camera and you can turn on your backup camera while you're driving forward just to kind of keep a watch on what's behind you. Again, this is your city water connection and this is a Sani flush. This is how we flush our systems. So you, really you don't have to worry about that. That's for us to do. Again, your power, your gas, we just use regular unleaded fuel, and then your dump right here. So essentially, if you're at a campsite, you would have a city water connection, a power connection, and a sewer connection. This right here is for a cable. We don't really advertise this, but if you have a cable cord and a campsite that provides cable TV, you're more than welcome to use it. This is your water heater and your house heater, so just be cautious. Both of these items will get very hot. 
This is your generator. There is a breaker box in your generator, but I doubt you'll need to get into it. And your exhaust to your generator is right here. If you do decide to use your generator, I always suggest keeping this window closed because the, since the exhaust is right there, there is a risk of carbon monoxide coming in. Last but not least is your fresh water tank. So you remember you have a portable tank and in order to fill it up, you just stick your water hose in here and wait till it overfills or continue to look at your control panel, that fresh button, until it's full. Now again, in order to access this water, you need the water pump. But if you have your um, hose hooked up to city water connection, then you do not need your water pump. You're an 11 and a half foot tall, so just be cautious of that. Obviously, you know, drive throughs parking garages, um, car washes, anything of that matter. Um, gas stations and bridges are mostly fine. Only thing to really be concerned about are trees that are hanging over the roads. Those can tend to scratch up some fiberglass, limbs can get underneath things and pull it off. So just be very cautious of that. You'll notice when I open up the door that there is an emergency brake right here. And the release to your emergency brake is right here. It's very important that you have this emergency brake on every single time you park. This is your radio right here. Now keep in mind your radio does run off of your house battery. So if your battery is off, your, your radio will not operate. So right now my battery is on and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on by holding down this little circle button. And now you have a radio. And I just turned it down by this little circle. When I hit this home button at the top screen, it gives me multiple options. I can hook up to Bluetooth, I can listen to Bluetooth music, I can even turn on my rear camera while I'm driving. And again, in order to turn this off, you just hold down this button until it's completely shut off. You also have some USB outlets right here, along with the cigarette um, outlet. Some hazards, AC unit, cup holders, the Ford chassis.